great service is so fleeting and elusive. You encounter it, and then, like the morning mist, the next minute, it is gone. One company representative is so spectacularly helpful, and the next one is seemingly possessed by evil spirits and demons. As companies, how do we get the angels inside our staff to engage with the clients rather than having reputation destroying devils intrude? Good service, consistently delivered, is no accident. And so it has to be made to occur. How can we do that? Welcome back to the year four of the Cutting Edge Japan Business Show, which we release every Monday. I'm your host, Dr. Greg Story, your corporate coaching and training guy, president of Dale Cutting Edge Training Japan, and best-selling author of Japan Sales Mastery and Japan Business Mastery. We are bringing the show to you from our high performance center in Akasaka in Minatoku, the business center of Tokyo. Why the cutting edge? We are looking at giving you a big edge in business in Japan. Let's all be at the forefront, at the cutting edge of how to flourish here in this market. This is episode number 164, how to provide great customer service. So let's get going. Jan Carlsen, many years ago, published a tremendous guide to customer service. He had the job of turning around SAS Airlines and captured that experience in his book, Moments of Truth. Carlson's insights flooded back to me when I checked into a hotel in Singapore. By the way, the drive in from Changi Airport is a credit to the Singaporean government, who spend millions every year to develop and maintain their landscaped, leafy, green, tropical thoroughfares. This is smart. You're already in a pleasant mood just getting into town. While going through the check-in process at the hotel, a waiter from the adjoining restaurant approached me, bearing an ice-cold glass of freshly squeezed juice. Singapore is very humid, and trust me, after a long flight, that ice-cold beverage went down very well. I thought, this is really well thought through customer service here by this hotel. One of the Carlson's observations about customer service, however, was the importance of consistency of delivery. For example, visualize the telephone receptionist answering your call in a pleasant, helpful manner, and you are uplifted by your exposure to the brand. The next staff member receiving the transferred call, however, is grumpy, disinterested, and unfriendly, instantly turning your mood and positive impression to go down and to plummet. You are suddenly irritated by this company who have just damaged their brand by their lack of an ability to sustain good service across only two consecutive touch points with the customer. How do you feel when you are given the runaround from department to department? So, back to my story. As I get to my room in good spirits after unexpectedly receiving my ice cold juice, I find out the television isn't working. After a forensic search for the cause, including a few harsh words with the television controller, I discover the power is not on. There is a card slot next to the door that initiates the power supply to the whole room. Actually, I discovered the same system in the elevator when I unsuccessfully tried to select my floor. Yes, I worked it all out eventually, but the thought occurred to me that the pleasant, busy young woman checking me into the hotel failed to mention these two salient facts to me. Sustainability of good service has to be the goal if you want to protect or grow your brand. 
Let me mention a customer service breakdown I particularly dislike here in Japan. When you call just about any organization here, you get a very flat voice answering the phone, saying in Japanese, XYZ company here. You ask to speak to that very excellent and impressive member of staff, Miss Suzuki, whom you met recently. The flat, uninterested voice tells you that she is not at her desk right now. And then you are abandoned to stone, cold, motherless silence. The, may I take down your name and phone number so that she can call you back, bit is rarely offered. Instead, you're left hanging on the phone. The inference of the silence is that Mrs. Suzuki is not around. That is your problem, buddy, and you should call back later rather than expect a return call from us. Again, to Carlson's point, these inconsistencies of customer service directly damage the brand. In this example, when I had previously met Ms. Suzuki, I was impressed by her. And consequently, I had a good impression of the whole organization. I was projecting that positive vibe to the entire company. The person taking the call has just put that positive image of the brand to the sword. Find out more when we come back from the break. If you want to sell more and do it more easily, do the Winning with Relationship Selling course. If you can't build trust, no sale. Can't design excellent questions to understand the client's needs, no sale. Can't present the solution convincingly, no sale. Can't handle objections properly, no sale. Can't close, no sale. Master the sales process by doing the Winning with Relationship Selling course now in either Japanese or English. Are you doing business with Japan? Do you really know how things work? Japan Business Mastery provides the answers. Do you have the right networks and know how to create them? Do you know how to get on the same wavelength with Japanese buyers? Do you know what being trustworthy looks like from the Japanese perspective? Japan Business Mastery is based on more than 30 years experience in Japan and will become your go-to guide. Want to succeed in Japan? Buy Japan Business Mastery now. Welcome back. When you are the leader of your company, you presume that everyone gets it about representing the brand and that the whole team delivers consistent levels of service. You expect that your whole team is supporting the marketing department's efforts to create an excellent image of the organization. After all, you've been spending truckloads of money on that marketing effort, haven't you? But are all the staff supporting the effort to build the brand. Perhaps they have forgotten what you've said about consistent customer service in the past, or they're a new hire or a part-timer who didn't get properly briefed. I heard one of my recent hires in the sales team answering the phone with an unhelpful tone in his voice. He actually sounded like he was angry. He was in his 50s, so no boy. But obviously, that had been his standard ugly phone manner throughout his whole entire working life. A perpetual brand killer, client alienating, reputation destroyer right there. We have an open plan offer, so I could hear this. If you're encased in the wood paneled, beautiful corner executive crib with a tremendous view, then maybe you will never know what is going on in the engine room, and therefore be unable to do anything about it. Leaders, we should sit down and draw the spider's web of how customers interact with us and who they interact with. We should expect that nobody on our team gets it about the preservation of the brand and determine we have to tell them again and again and again. So. How about this for a starter for educating our staff 
to do a better job protecting and enhancing the brand. One, answer the phone with a pleasant, happy voice. Be helpful. Offer your name first so the customer won't be embarrassed that they didn't recognize your voice. It also gives the caller confidence that a real person is going to take care of their needs. Two, if you take the call and the person they are calling isn't there, proactively offer to ensure they get a call back as soon as possible and guarantee you will get their message through to them. Three, end by thanking them for their call and again, leave your name in case there is anything further the caller may need. First impressions count, but so do all the follow-up impressions if we want to build a sustainable, consistent, positive image with our customers. Consistency of good experiences doesn't happen automatically. We have to look again at all of our touch points with our customers and ensure that everyone in the team understands their place in maintaining the excellent brand we have built up. Action steps. One, draw your spider's web of client touch points and identify who needs training, including non-regular staff. Two, design the experience you want the client to have and train everyone around the content. Three, look at your systems for moving or transitioning the client through the organization to make sure the client experience is consistently good. Four, always check to see what you think is happening is actually the case. Please subscribe to the Cutting Edge Japan Business Show on YouTube. Share it with your family, friends, and colleagues. Become a regular. Our website details are on screen now, enjapan.dalecutting.com. It's awesome value, so check it out. You might also enjoy our other shows for podcasts, Mondays for the Cutting Edge Japan Business Show, Tuesday for the Presentations Japan series, every second Tuesday for the Business Touches in the Oshie Show, Wednesdays for the Sales Japan series, Thursdays for the Leadership Japan series, and every second Thursday for the Business Pro Terebi Show and the Business Pro Podcast, Fridays for the Japan Business Mastery Show, and Saturdays for Japan's top business interviews, wherever you get your podcasts. Also, every second Thursday, we release our Business Pro Terebi Show every Friday, the Japan Business Mastery Show, and every Saturday, Japan's top business interviews. These are all on our YouTube channel. In episode 165, we're looking at project management fundamentals. So, yoroshiku, onigaitashimasu. Please join me for the next episode of the Cutting Edge Japan Business Show. We are here to help you. And we've only got one direction in mind for you and your business, and that is up. <music>